Good morning and welcome to Breaking the Rules. My name is Ray Lowe and I'm your co-host today and I'm also the luckiest guy in the world. Uh, one of the things that people don't realize is that everybody can feel like the luckiest guy in the world. You just have to do three things. Uh, the first thing you have to do is to make up your mind that you're going to take control of your life. Once you do that, you have to kind of redesign your life, and you need to redesign your life based on three things. You have to make sure that the passion that you have is built into your new life. You have to look at your unique ability or abilities and how you're going to deliver value. And then the third thing that you need to do is to position this in a place where you're going to be appreciated by the people around you. So you kind of choose your market too. And uh, if you've been following our show for a while, you're going to notice that every one of our guests is in some spot on this journey to be the luckiest guy in the world. And, and it is a journey. It's not something you do once. It's something that you continually do because life changes. So we'd love to be able to help you be the luckiest guy or girl or couple or whatever it is you want to be, too. And uh, we have a lot of material on our website, www.theluckiestguyintheworld.com. And it's time now for us to go to our co-host, Casey Dempster, and what have you got to say for us today? Well, I'll start by saying good morning. And um, I talked briefly about our, our show's title, The Breaking the Rules, which of course we're not, we're not encouraging people to go out and break laws. <laughs> we're just saying break the rules a little bit because the reality is in our lives there's change all the time. Most people are not comfortable with change to a, to a certain degree. And um, we believe that if you feel that you can control what's happening to you, you will feel better about change. So that's what we're trying to say is that uh, if the rules as they stand don't fit your situation or how you want to operate, then maybe you should think about breaking the rules. So I have a quote today, as usual, and this one is from a gentleman named Jack Foster, and he says, rules are a great way to get ideas. All you have to do is break them. So when I told that to Ray, he was a little puzzled and said, I think you need to look a little further into that. So I did, and um, he has a book called How to Get Ideas. And one of the things that he talks about is that to, to get ideas, you need, you're usually working with things that are already in place or things that you already know, but you start to play with them and, and you, you juxtapose them, you, you scramble things up, you, you play with it, and then all of a sudden you do come up with a great idea. And I think anybody that has been trying to solve a problem has kind of done that. Maybe they didn't know it. So that's what we're talking about. Break some rules and get some good ideas. Okay, so we have a guest today. Yes, we do. It's <laughs> Shelly O'Donovan. And Shelly yes. is obviously one of the luckiest people in the world. <laughs> okay, she has uh, come out of the corporate world into her own venture. And uh, Shelly, why don't you take a couple of minutes and tell us what this transition was all about and uh, where you are and how sure. you got there. Absolutely. So I, it, I don't know if you remember, as kids, there were these books called Choose Your Own Adventure. And so you'd get through a piece of that book and, and they would say, OK, if you want to go down this dark alleyway, you pick, you pick um, A and you go to page 65 or you go to page 85 and you do something else. And so I, I found in the corporate world there were only so many directions to go, but I wanted to really take that by the reins and to choose my own adventure. And that's exactly what I did. And I spent a lifetime in kind of in the influence space, so working in government relations and public policy, trying to affect change on that policy level and trying to really influence what was happening. And I decided that it was time to really bring that to um, individuals. And so I work with teams right now. I work um, with a lot of corporations. And I also work with individuals to help them just amp up their influence. And we do that through a variety of methods, um, a lot of, very heavy in teaching body language, so a lot of nonverbal communication, and then how to just get what you want mm -hmm. and kind of amp up the volume on your influence. What, what was it, though, that sparked you to realize that um, there was a need to learn more about nonverbal communication? So I was uh, 
headed to Harrisburg for a lobbying visit. And I was, if, I don't know if you've ever done these, but you basically go up to the state capitol in a group and you vie for whatever that position is. And we were there for the life science industry. And I had the same talking points I had the year before, but I had um, just taken a pretty extensive body language course. And so I used all of that, right? I sat up taller, I used my hands more, I just gestured more. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting next to CEOs, and these legislators want to talk to me. They're asking me questions rather than the CEO. And, it, and I had the same talking points the year before when no one really was looking for more information from me. As well, I went into a meeting with um, a freshman legislator from Philadelphia who, you know, on the freshman level, you don't really have a lot of power in the legislature. But this was a guy who exuded energy, right? He had all those body language cues. And I could see people sit up more in the room. I could just feel this energy really coming forward in the room and just how people interacted with him. And I knew then that there was something really important here and something that everybody should have access to. And so once we learn it consciously um, versus subconsciously, we can really influence um, everything in our life, everything from how well our children listen to to getting Ooh, that promotion at work. I like that about how well our children listen. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I know just right away that I feel engaged with Shelly. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thank you. and I think it's a lot that you're not just sitting there with your back against the back of the chair right. and like a wet noodle or whatever it is. <laughs> right. and, and there's exactly. energy there, you're absolutely right. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about how you got here uh, because you started in the pharmaceutical industry, I did, mostly. yes. Okay, and you know, here you are, you're in a big company job, right. you know, with a decent paycheck, right, I imagine. Right. And here you are now, you're in your own business. Right. And I hope the paycheck is decent, but yes. it's not a paycheck, <laughs> is it? Anymore? Right, it's a little different, sure. absolutely. So, so how did you take this risk? What happened? How, how did your, your kids and your family accept yeah. this? So um, my family was, was very supportive, and my husband especially knew that I had this drive to do something a little different. And I'd spent really, oh, you know, 20 plus years working in that influence space and helping um, companies influence. And I felt like it was time to help individuals influence. And then, you know, with, with owning your own companies comes all those joys and risks as well. And it's a huge challenge. Um, but it's a challenge that I, I love. You know, I get to wake up every day and do what I want to do and really drive my schedule, get to make decisions. You know, in the corporate space, mm -hmm. you're told to jump on a plane, you have to go, you know, to California tomorrow and, and you have to go. Mm -hmm. But it's different when you're driving your own business and you know that you're going to California for something very specific and something that's going to hit your bottom line. So before it was which dark alley do you choose? Right. Now it's which bright alley do exactly. you choose? Exactly, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Um, you had a whole list of things that you do for people. Yes. And I'm absolutely fascinated <laughs> for this. I mean, you know, my job is to deal with people all the time. Right. Uh, I've never had any formal body language training, and right. I'm sure I'm doing all the things I shouldn't be doing right now. <laughs> you know, no, you're great. But, but, uh, Talk us talk a little bit about some not not so much the body language, but some of the problems that you help people set off. And then, if you want to go into the body language, sure. be my guest. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, I often will get sales teams coming to me, or sometimes there are teams that are working with physicians, or whatever that is, um, and there are executives that are struggling with either closing that sale or engagement. And how do you engage? And so we teach them a way to use their body language, but then also just some of the things that have to come. So, you know, before we started, we were talking about kind of this idea of multitasking. And, and obviously, when you're meeting with someone, they want you to be engaged in that conversation. So you can't be on the cell phone. Mm -hmm. So teaching people um, really how to turn up the volume on their body language, how to put science-backed uh, techniques into their communication so that they are more engaging. So I'll give you a great example. I had an executive that I was coaching. He was a vice president um, at a fairly big company. And he said to me, listen, I'm being told that I'm too aggressive. And he's, 
And he's like, I just, I don't see it. I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, my team is telling me I'm very aggressive. So I was like, all right, well, you know, luckily they had a conference room which had a glass, um, a glass window. So I'm like, I'm just gonna sit out here for a little bit while you take your team meeting. So he walks into the room, you know, very aggressively walks into the room. He kind of puts his hand back and he puts his leg up like this and he starts talking to his team. Mm -hmm. And I can see the team just shrink down in their body language. And so it was really this gesture, which we call the cowboy cross, which is a very aggressive move to make. You wouldn't normally make it sitting here with me, but he felt like he was comfortable. <laughs> he so felt like he was, that, exactly, so. exactly. Yeah. Um, and on the flip side, I work with a lot of women who sometimes have the opposite. They're being told they're not assertive enough or mm -hmm. not aggressive enough, and there's a fine line. Um, so they have to, we work on body language techniques on how they're making eye contact, mm -hmm. on how they're sitting, on how they may be seated, on the height of the chair, all these things to help them really pull that all together and to be more influential and to feel more comfortable in their own skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like you're teaching acting to some extent. It, it, well, it, sure. It's, so, um, yeah. so what do you do? You pick out the role that you want to have and then kind of figure out how that role was played so that we can mimic it or? Well, kind of. So it's a little bit more nuanced than that. So it's certainly looking at um, what you're trying to communicate in that moment. So there are very high stake moments, whether that's in an interview, whether that's when you're going in to make a sale or when you're going in to pitch business that you need to really bring your A game. And so in those, in those moments, we want to show confidence mm -hmm. and confidence is scientifically made up of um, really being, um, being aware of, of your information. So knowing that you're confident in your information and then also having that charisma come through. Mm -hmm. And so if we pull that all together and we give them some body language tips and some tricks to really help them pull that together, then all of a sudden they're making a much different impact than they weren't originally. Mm -hmm. So it's this intentional way of doing it. Okay, so we have to pause for a commercial break here. And when we come back, more excitement and how we control the world, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Don't go away, we'll be right back. Why should you choose Rowan College at Gloucester County? Low cost, the number one nursing program in all of New Jersey. More than 70 programs of study, including selective admissions with record enrollment, a premier partnership with Rowan University, transfer options with numerous universities, four-year degree options on our campus, Rowan College at Gloucester County. Now you're thinking. Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856-226-4800. When did you see this? Welcome back, everybody, to Breaking the Rules. I'm Casey Dempster, here with my co-host, Ray Lowe, and our guest, Shelly O'Donovan, who has <laughs> been mesmerizing us with um, information about body language and communication and how to 
um, make everything better. <laughs> All right. Now, I, now I have the secret list here. Uh, okay. Nice. <laughs> so, so the secret list is these are just some of the things that you teach people. Yes, absolutely. So let me throw them out because they're absolutely incredible things. If you could teach me all these things, I'm yours. <laughs> okay? So, so creating a killer first impressions. Yeah. So talk about why that, well, I think we kind of know why right. it's important, but what is it that you do? How do you yeah, do that? Yeah, so it, it is really important because there's research that shows that within the first few minutes of you walking in somewhere, that first impression is made. Mm -hmm. And what I find really interesting is that um, you often have people that think that it is not, it, that it is when you first speak, that it's when you utter your first word, and it isn't. So I work with people so that they can rein that in. So they walk into the room confidently. So they're not hurried walking in somewhere. So they walk in really with that presence and, and giving them some tools to do that so that they feel comfortable. And this really mom matters in those high stakes moments. Okay. Powerful elevator speeches. Yes. So it's important. It's really important to have that elevator speech very clear, but then also to bring the nonverbals into play with that as well. So, so I was going to say briefly for anybody that doesn't know what you mean by elevator speech. Yes. Um, this is where somebody says to you, what do you do? Exactly. And you've got the, an elevator ride amount of time, like 30 seconds to yes. 60 seconds to give them a very impactful message of what you do and maybe make them want to know more. Absolutely. Okay. That's exactly the now hook if I you're trying to. <laughs> well, and, and one of the things that, you know, going back to the story you told us before the break, right. sometimes people go in overly confident and you got to tone it down. Absolutely. So, so it's how you get the image right. And then in the elevator speech, I mean, how long do we have in that elevator speech? Right, like 30 seconds usually. You want to be able to get something really clear and exactly that hook hook that audience in. So when the elevator doors open, they want to know more? That's, exactly. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. All right. We moved something up on the list. Yeah. Oh. Okay. This was for Casey's purpose. <laughs> okay. Human lie detection. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So there are very specific things that I can teach people so that they can read lies. Okay. So we all lie. We actually lie. Oh, just two to three, every two to three minutes, we usually launch a lie. Really? And, um, and sometimes they're white lies, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're lies that make us feel better. But, but I can help to teach people when they can spot those lies. And so there's a process that you go through. You're never going to get 100% effective, mm -hmm. but you will get up to about 93%. Wow. Wow. Although the average person is really about 51% huh. all the time. So we can, we can teach you to try to spot those lies and to really find well, those I, lies. If you can be right 51% of the time, that's pretty good. I mean, you, you get, you, that's, <laughs> I don't know. A, that's a good batting average in a lot of sports, right? <laughs> it's like a flip of a coin, though, really. That, yes, yes, that's true. Okay, so I did not chop down the cherry tree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your next one down here is decoding the face. Yes. So there are... Um, intense expressions that we make when we feel an intense emotion. So mm -hmm. I could, you could ask me about something that I didn't want to talk about and all of a sudden I might flash a quick angry micro expression. And once, once you can learn to pick those up because they happen so quickly, then you can start to really feel like you understand people a little better. You can connect a little better because then you can you can start to see those patterns of when someone's excited, when they're not excited, when they're happy. Um, and so they happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I can teach people those. So when you learn to spot them, that's right. one thing, but can you teach me how to create them? So the interesting thing about micro expressions is they're very, um, very much involuntary. Mm -hmm. So they're very hard to control. Um, you know, that just blew the whole interview. I, you know, I was getting really excited here. He was I thought, starting to think he was going to be in power. You I know? can teach you how to read them. Though. Okay. So, so we have confident body language. Yes. So confident body language, sitting up straight, having, being open. Mm -hmm. um, I actually teach at Wharton right now, and I teach public speaking and influence. And it's amazing to see the difference 
that just tweaking that student's ability to stand up straight, to mm -hmm. open their arms a little more when they speak, it makes a huge impression on that audience. Just those little, little things. But sometimes they're really hard to catch unless you have someone else that can spot that mm -hmm. for you. So you videotape them, I guess, as I part do. of the class. I do, absolutely. Because they have to be able to see it. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. I'll, I went to college as an adult, and um, I was in a class where part of the final project or whatever it was, everybody had to get up and give a presentation. Right. And uh, there was a young boy who got up, and he was literally, you could see his paper going Aww. like this. And it was heartbreaking for me because I was older and I was more confident right. about speaking in front of a group. Um, and I just, it, it made me feel so bad. And, um, and I thought, I wonder how the teachers can evaluate, like are they, how much weight are they putting on right. the actual public presentation rather than just the content. You know, right, it's, absolutely. It's, um, it's all. It, it takes a long time. It does. It's a, it's a life lifetime skill that you learn really mm -hmm. how to how to public speak and how to do it effectively and, and you can even the best speakers in the world can have an off day yeah yeah so we have a, a bunch more of these but before we get too far in yes. here so how do i get to get you helping me do all these i can go to wharton obviously <laughs> yeah, right? yeah no, exactly. that, that'll cost me about seventy five thousand dollars <laughs> right a year. right yeah. thank you so what are the other alternatives? So you can reach out um, on our website. So I think that's listed on the, on the screen. Um, and contact us. We go in and do a lot of training sessions. So we often will work with companies with uh, their, either their sales teams or anyone who's really client facing. We work with um, those teams and we pull together workshops and trainings. Um, and then I also do some executive coaching. So some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, with people who would like to increase their, their influence. And much like um, public speaking, influence is a skill as well. So there are things that we can teach you to help you grow over a, you know, a limited number of, of months or years that can really amp up that influence for you. This is absolutely fascinating, <laughs> but it gets better, okay? okay? So we have here the art of networking. The art of networking, oh. yes. So there's an art form behind it. We just don't go and drink a lot and pat people right. on the back yeah, and things exactly. like that, right? There is. So there are places to strategically put yourself. There are ways to open up conversations. There are a variety of methods that you can use to just be more effective at networking in, in that kind of cocktail reception. But there's also other things that you can do if you're networking. Um, you know, through LinkedIn or through other channels as well, that you can help to be really engaging and help to attract people to you. Okay, this next one on the list is for you to ask. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> I used to say Ray could do this. He, uh -oh. How to sell anything to anyone. Yes, yes. So again, going back to some of those body language, we find in sales that occasionally it's it's something that's happening from a body language perspective or from an influence perspective that is keeping that sale from being made. So to give you an example, I was working with clients and they would typically go in and sell to their client. And what I was, what I was watching with these sales people was that they were picking up their pens and clicking them. And they were clicking them the whole time. And then they would, they would give their presentation, launch into the price, and, and they're reading from a script. And so when they give the price, the customer's stuck on the price, but they never picked up those cues that the customer just couldn't handle the price. Mm -hmm. So they weren't able to really, you know, rep report build and give them more information mm -hmm. to, to get them to a place where they could make that sale. You can really teach all this stuff? Yes. <laughs> okay. I got to go back to my list here because I don't want to forget any of this. Just oh, one more. Okay. okay. Nonverbal branding. Nonverbal branding. So um, we certainly you don't have to go more than the media to see some people that have very strong nonverbal brands, whether they have aggressive behavior and that's what they're trying to, to portray, or they have a warm nature and they're trying to portray that. So from a nonverbal perspective, there are things that I help my clients to do so that they always have this branding in place and really just how, again, how they present themselves and how they brand themselves from a nonverbal perspective, from a communications perspective. Interesting. Um, I want to go back to your website. Yes. I think it's illuminatethemessage.com. Yes. OK. And we're just about out of time here. Do I have time for one more quick one? OK. Uh, 
We'll make yep. it really quick. quick. You know, it's 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 body language in business. I mean, yes. that's pretty much what you've been telling us. Here. Absolutely. And, and if you're going to be in business, you really need to develop these skills, and you're the person who can help them do that. Absolutely. Either in a group or one on one. Yes. And the and the and the website again. Once more, one more time. Illum IlluminateTheMessage.com. Yes. Okay. And uh, Shelley, thank you so thank you. much for being here today. <laughs> and uh, we have a show next week, right? Yes, uh, we'll be back next week at 10 o'clock on Tuesday for Breaking the Rules. So uh, make sure you tune in and have a great week. Thank great. you. Thanks again for Thanks. being here, Shelley. Thank you for having me. So that was unbelievably great. Oh, I good. <laughs> when I needed to create a better visitor experience. Improve our workflow. Attract new customers. That's when FastSigns recommended Fleet Graphics. Yeah, now business is rolling in. Get started at FastSigns.com.